every battalion detachment or so on will have uh, a lawyer who is trained in uh, military justice and it's their responsibility to provide advice both to the commanders as they're making decisions and they also have to disseminate the laws of armed conflict uh, to all of the ranks so that they are aware of what they can and cannot do. It's usually also standard practice for uh, any person who's deployed in the field to be carrying uh, usually just a, a small A5 or even half that size card which will indicate the kind of key points of the law of armed conflict that they need to follow such as no targeting of civilians, um, no looting property, things like that. Well again anyone who would be conducting an interrogation they're in theory going to be reasonably high up in command so they would have likely gone through uh, training in the laws of armed conflict if the interrogation is being conducted by a military lawyer, then they, they would have both their law degree and also training in the laws of armed conflict. And they would be given instructions as to what is and is not permissible treatment of, of persons who have been detained. It tends to be different for whether the armed conflict has been classified as international or non-international because there are different kinds of rules, but as a general principle it covers things like humane treatment, there can't be any kind of threat or use of, of violence against them, there can't be any kind of humiliating, degrading uh, treatment um, or threat of such. The laws of armed conflict with regards to the treatment of POWs and detainees are very specific in terms of what as a minimum rule can be provided such as shelter, uh, appropriate food, access to uh, health and medical facilities and recreational facilities and things like that. Um, beyond that uh, it would be an internal policy whether they could make out the case that perhaps restricting their sleeping hours to say five or six hours a night or, or perhaps interrupting it would be in keeping with that but as a general rule they would have to follow basic minimums so you would have to argue that if it's a, a, a detainee who perhaps is, is going to be put to work in um, physical labour they would have to have at least six or seven hours sleep a night and that probably couldn't be interrupted. You would certainly be able to make out the case that something like that would be considered inhumane. In terms of the other kinds of things like dietary management, you wouldn't be able to include things like uh, starvation ration, that would definitely be against the laws of armed conflict. Um, also if there were specific religious requirements, say for instance halal food or kosher food, uh, or if someone were strictly say gluten intolerant or something like that, yes you would have to um, absolutely respect those rules because that would be in keeping with both respect for religious practices which is also a key requirement for POWs and uh, the, the provisions of humane treatment.